Sí, sí. Hello. Yes, sir, go ahead, please. Uh, yeah, I want to call a report because somebody took a little baby in the trash can in the Villa Cordova apartment. Three and a half year old Jane Cordova Doe was found beaten to death. Her body abandoned at the Villa Cordova apartments. Police canvassed the area, knocking on dozens of doors. Have you ever seen this girl? For weeks, no one knew the identity of this little girl or how someone could dump her and walk away. That detective had just filed a report with a woman who said her granddaughter was missing. Metro Police immediately went to California, where they caught up with the girl's mother, Gladys Perez. Police also found her 28-year-old boyfriend, Mark Anthony Colon, in Minnesota. And here's the rest of the story. It starts on January 8th, when Gladys Perez and her boyfriend, Anthony Colon, drive from California to Las Vegas with her two daughters and his two daughters. They stayed at the Stratosphere. January 11th, the boyfriend went gambling and reportedly lost most of their money. Perez says they got in a fight about the gambling loss, and he hit her and three-year-old Crystal. Crystal then had what her mother would describe as a seizure. Soon after, Crystal stopped breathing. Perez says they panicked and drove around town. They pulled into the fountains of Villa Cordova apartment complex, where Colon put Crystal in a box and left her in the dumpster. They came to Las Vegas with four children and left with only three. Biggest theater, please. <laughs> They're all about the same size. <laughs> Thank you. There's really not much evidence of premeditation, which means it's probably what the state's looking at. More of a second degree theory that she knew this guy was abusive. She didn't stop it. She could have. There are many opportunities for her to do so. Call police, take the child out of the home, things like that. She didn't do it, and it was only a matter of time before something like this happened. I think I have trouble proving that, but I, that's, that's where I think they're probably going. One of many ways. Hey, Gladys. Hi, nice nice Gladys. You. How are you feeling? Uh, I'm tired. <laughs> um... What I wanted to talk with you today about is um, why we've told you how Crystal died. You still seem to have feelings that somehow this was an accident or Cologne didn't mean to do it. It was maybe natural causes. So I wanted to talk to you exactly uh, what we believe happened. Um, based on what you told police, based on what other t people told police. And the, the thing I want you to understand is that Cologne, Cologne killed Crystal. It wasn't natural causes. He took affirmative steps. He hit your daughter and caused her to die. Now, I believe that happened when you were gone. Coroner says basically that somebody punched Crystal, either in the back or in the front, she has a, at least two, maybe three cracked ribs, broken ribs. She died from blunt force trauma. She died from somebody hitting her. His oldest daughter, uh, the oldest one's Maxine, right? Tells the police, Crystal started puking after daddy hit her. But I showed you before that bruise on Crystal's back, all right? The reason you're in trouble, the reason you're here, the problems you have is because when the, when the, the DAs and the cops and the jury is going to look at the situation and they evaluate the choices you had, it seems that you've chosen to protect this man 
over the children. Now we're going to do what we can to try and change that perception, but that is the perception of, of your situation, is that whenever given a choice, you make the wrong one. Maybe it could have done a lot more for Crystal. Maybe I could not know. At the time, my state of mind, the beatings, everything, it was just so confusing. There's a lot of things I don't remember. I don't want you to have any sympathy for this man. I don't want you to have any kind of communications with him. And I want you to understand what really happened. I know and I understand what Anthony did. And I don't excuse him for it. And he needs to pay for what he did to my daughter. But then here I am, <laughs> six months pregnant with his daughter now. So it's like, I just, Conditions we're having to work under. Do they, is there an air conditioning issue over here? Yeah. That's what I said. No, I don't. They just said it's broken. Mine. Oh, is your air conditioner working? Mine is. Where, where's Gladys? What's her status? Is she going to be our witness, or are we prosecuting her? And until, until we know that, it's it's tough to. Well, you, on the one hand, we don't want to crucify her at this point because she might be our witness. I was going to say, are you ready to discuss where you're going to go with her? I mean, what have you guys been talking about, or is that we haven't, too we early to talk about that? We haven't said a word right to them. We haven't said anything, um, but in my mind, some, I'm thinking a second, and she testifies for us. She's charged with a first. If she's willing to plead guilty to a second-degree murder under a um, failure to uh, render assistance theory, where he's the bad guy, he delivers the fatal blow, and uh, she gets, you know, a life sentence, two, two to, or ten to life. There's no point in dealing her out unless she's going to testify, because otherwise Absolutely. we want them together, let them, no, 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 all no, the no. statements Absolutely. come in. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. So she needs to give us a proffer on what she can give us on Cologne, as opposed to, I don't really remember what happened. I want to know what... Is she with us or is she against well, us? I mean, maybe I, I'm good either way, but I want to know because that's going to affect some of the decisions that we make. I mean, if that's the way they want to go, that yeah. she's the poor battered woman, that's fine. She does some unconscionable things as a mother, just unforgivable things. Okay, and so no, think, that's fine. You know, it really doesn't matter. I don't see how she gets out of a second, but I don't think she no, thinks she's going to get a first. I don't think she does either. That's why that's, that's where our offer, our offer can't go lower than that. Well, because right. that's the best she's ever going to do. Yeah. I feel bad for her because she's just a total mess. And the fact, she says she even knows that, she's like, she hates everything and everything but him. And she goes, she knows, she knows that it's messed up. Yeah, she cried a lot. Well, essentially today she told me that she never wants to get out of prison again. She doesn't want to get out. Ever. And why? She says it's too painful. She never wants to see her kids again. She never wants to. She's in a tough spot. I mean, she's not going to be there forever. But the weird thing is, is that I feel, she says, um, you know, that she misses, she misses getting beat up because Anthony would always like be really loving to her afterwards and she just got used to it after so many years. Years? She's with the guy for three months. Well, with Saul, with her ex, with her yeah. other husband. And she misses it. Yeah. The other thing I was concerned about and she, that she mentioned that I wanted to tell you about is apparently she's been talking to a pastor and I have his name. Um who also happens to be Anthony's pastor and she but this is the bad this is the bad part about it she apparently facilitated getting the same pastor that Anthony has I don't want that link that even a communication through that pastor is giving a a um, a tether to cologne I know. which is preventing her from being able to yeah. be independent it 
it's probably well within his parameters to exchange personal messages of she says she forgives you or right. he says you know right. that's, that's that that gives them each their peace but it just screws everything up well that's what i yeah and she says she's telling him like everything and that the other thing i'm worried about which i told her please don't do is that she wants to call the da's office and take full responsibility for everything and she said she got to the point once where she picked up the phone and dialed the number for her she can redeem her life if she saves anthony from the death penalty is what she told me yesterday. Because she's lost focus of Crystal and her focus is completely directed towards Cologne. It's a bad place to be focused. And you know, hopefully when she has the baby, stabilizes a little, they can put her on some medication regime and we'll get to a place where she can think clearly and reasonably for herself. Yeah. In the meantime, our job is to keep her from really screwing everything up. But hopefully... Thank you. You're welcome. Hopefully. Well, we've got to talk tomorrow because we've got to get on this immediately. I'll write you a memo, but I just wanted to tell you. I appreciate it. Okay. See you later. Thanks, Chris. All right, come on, bro. this to where they're gonna actually gonna work on the boom box. <laughs> this call is subject to monitoring and recording. Thank you for using Evercom. I don't believe what they say. What they say? Did you beat the baby and throw in the trash can? No! They said they beat the baby throw in the trash can. Are they blaming both of us or just me? <laughs> it's in the news, Bob! It's all over the news! You might hear that out. Yes. you were expecting to hear the last? Not what I was expecting. You see how he uses her for money? That's what he does. He so much anger. Mm -hmm. I'm so angry right now. You're so what? Angry. <laughs> You know the other thing we talked about bringing today? You want to do that some other time? Whatever. It doesn't matter. What do you want to do? Like, we could do it now, get it all out already. What kind of bruise, this bruise you talked to the police about, what happened in California, right? Anthony told you she fell on a statue or a ceramic figurine or something. Where was that bruise on her back? 
high, low, kind of middle, kind of in the middle. Where's Crystal's back? Is that the kind of bruise you remember seeing? I've got so many. Let me ask you this. Does any one of these bruises look like the previous bruise that you described? I don't remember it being so big, though. But that was kind of the general area? So you think it's all those bruises that just magically appeared? He doesn't remember anything. He's got amnesia now. I sure don't remember. I don't have Crystal anymore every fucking day. You still think this was an accident? Or a mistake? Problem is, is that it's never gonna be over. In a way, this is, like I said, you're just waking up from a, from a really bad dream. I don't know, it's not even a dream because it's real. But you're just starting to see things with both eyes open. Sense, she would have been right there. Yeah. See this toilet seat? So this ridge sticking out here, you know, may very well be consistent with that linear bruising in her pelvic area based right. on her height. We know that everything happened in here. The other daughter says, no, his daughter. Well, his own daughter, his Maxine. His own daughter yeah. says that he comes out with his fist. Clinched. Maxine is so close to where this is happening. Yeah, there's all those quarters in here. I yeah. mean, they could know everything that was going on in here. Anybody that's in this apartment knows what's going on in here. Yeah. Where, where did the where did the girls say? I mean, from talking to them, where where were they in here? They all slept on the uh, couch, watching TV, and then um, Gladys, mommy, and uh, Anthony stayed in the room here. Very small. Mm -hmm. Don't you think? Yep. Yesterday. I know she's mad at me, huh? No, 
She was not mad at you. Um, I called her. She would, you know, she did mention the ba name and the baby and all that stuff. I mean, here's what I can tell you about giving the kid Cologne's name. If you choose to give the baby Cologne's last name, uh, it could potentially make it easier for him to exert some kind of control or his family to exert some kind of control. If you ever choose in the future to make him officially the father, that can be done. Uh, to undo it, though, is going to be a different thing. Can you think of some reasons why it's important that Delilah has Cologne's name? I just want her to know that she's in, she was acknowledged by her father. Um, Tim, I don't have my real dad. I didn't get his last name. I don't know, maybe because that happened to me, I just don't want it to happen to her. I don't want her to feel that her dad didn't want her, just like mine didn't want me. Okay. You think that after she learns about all this, that her dad and her mom are sitting in jail because of the death of her sister? And then, you know, to think that on top of that, her dad didn't want her? Her dad didn't care about her? Have, have you considered the effect on Delilah if after a year or a year and a half, Cologne's family wanted to get custody of her, part-time custody of her? Have you thought about that and how that might affect Delilah? I thought about it. Well, if you just put it between you and Delilah, I think I think you'll come to the right decision. Thank you. All right, class. Take care, okay? That's pretty neat, though. That's Gladys writing with the whole little cool little drawing pictures and everything. And she starts off with, I love you, and then ends up with foul language telling him how she hates him. <laughs> She's on a little they roller coaster. Looked, um, they looked friendly Look at this. in court. I heart you, I heart you, over and over again. But then later on, here's the F word in here. <laughs> the F word? Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty good. So, I got a headache reading it, so I thought I'd send it to you. <laughs> Thanks. That's mm -hmm. pretty good art, right? The handcuff going through the hearts. Yeah. Yeah. Through the handcuff's pretty good. But she's on a big emotional roller coaster in these letters. Well, you know, she's loving him one minute and cursing him out the next. But for what? Not for killing Crystal, just, you know, I'm mad because you have another girlfriend. Uh, yeah. I mean, no, there's some issues about her other girlfriends, yeah. That's what I thought. You know, she has some nicknames for him. She calls him Shady. Okay, well, she's still pretty attached to him. Until he tells her the name of the new girlfriend. Well, does she know? That? I don't know. I mean, I think she suspects. Isn't the, isn't the new girlfriend pregnant, She's too? She's suspecting something, though. Since not, they're communicating. Not, not like right, since they're communicating and, and we're, you know, legally intercepting that stuff the way we're getting it, that's fine. Just let it keep going. Right, right. These letters that she is uh, getting to him via this conduit in the jail, uh, sure seems like she loves him and wants to be with him and... It's all real positive for that they still have a relationship, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, so if they're putting a spin on it that she's a victim and he's the only bad guy in this, they're, that's going to kind of hurt them there, those jail letters. It's just, this is Gladys writing to Kathy. You can read it if you want. Yeah, I think she's writing to Kathy here, too. Uh, you really did try to save Chris. I'm not excusing him for what he did. What's done is done, but I also do remember him crying for her. Look at this one. Sent and sealed with a kiss from heaven. Crystal, it says. To my what? To my shady? And the first time I heard your voice, I fell in love with it. I knew I was going to end up with you. And after our first kiss, I knew... I was struck, I was stuck. What I mean is that I loved you before I even had you. So why would the distance make a difference now? Have I told you lately that I love you? Well, I love you, 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 I love you. 
Mark my words, Daddy. Remember that Mama loves you, honey, and that I need you, Dad. I truly do, baby. Even after not being physically together for five months, now I desire you more than ever. When and if I get... Oh, God. I'm going to read, like, the dirty parts. <laughs> You read those. Oh, read those, please. <laughs> no, they're really not that bad. Um, let me see. I think this is cologne writing to Gladys. Hey, baby. Now, I'm going to tell you like this. On my daughter's soul, I did not hurt her. And I've been thinking that maybe, just maybe, they'll end up getting me for second degree just because of all the letters they got. Too bad those letters from him aren't on here. And so our whole argument is this guy has this unbelievable hold on her. Mm -hmm. Not unbelievable, but, you know, I mean... She's fucked up. Go to the clinic, or you stay here. They came, huh? To the clinic. Oh, you did. Mm -hmm. You do anything else except physically examine? What do you have to say? Nothing. He sent me back. Well, did he give you an idea, or did he say in a week, or did he say anything? He said he wouldn't be surprised if I have the baby this weekend. Okay. Let's see. I, I, I just want to employ you, Gladys. You don't need to worry about this. You can always do it later on if you want. Uh, you know, I would just ask you to, to not put his name on there. Save us that extra potential hassle. And uh, let's get Delilah home with your mom as soon as possible. I'm talk about it. I wish you knew Anthony personally, who he is and what he's about. Oh, I know plenty about Anthony. I've met a lot of people you like Anthony. I'm so scared not to do it. Like, I just don't want to risk my kids or my family by not doing it. So you think some of his homies are going to go to your mom's house or something? I'm just scared. He knows where my mom is. He knows where my grandma is. He knows where the girls are going to be at. And... You know what's funny? That's exactly what he's told his last... one of his last girlfriends. Let's not go home. Exactly what he told her. Do you know Lissette? I don't know her, but I know she's the girl's mom. You know, here's the, here's the police report. But she lays out the exact thing he did to you. Nice guy at first. Then it's the uh, don't talk to friends, don't talk to family. Isolate the person. Then the beating starts when he doesn't get everything he wants. I mean, he never did anything to this girl's parents. It was just a threat to control her. I heard that, see, that's the thing that I'm, I play over and over in my head. Even one time when he choked me out at Nelly's house, just because I didn't put a shirt on the dog we had, because we had a dog with us, too. I told you to put the shirt on, and you're blaming Max for it. You don't know how to face up to your responsibilities and all kinds of drama. Anyways, he ended up choking me out that day, put me against the wall, and then when when I, in front of all the kids? In front of all the kids. When I woke up, um, I woke up because he kicked me. 
And I got up. You passed out because of his choking you. Mm -hmm. And he said, the scariest thing is, he said, it only took 15 seconds. Your mouth starts foaming and your eyes roll back. Just 15 seconds. That's all it takes. And that plays in my head every day. There's times when I dream about that. I think that was the closest to him killing me, really. I've never told me about this before. This shit's important. You gotta tell me this shit. I did tell you about the conversation. I mean, you know what the state wants to paint, right? Huh? You're in a nice getaway with uh, Cologne. Mm -hmm. You're just trying to run away because you don't want to get in trouble. Mm -hmm. They don't want to believe that he's, you know, beating you up. And I mean, here he, he nearly killed you in front of his daughters and your daughter. And am I wrong for being scared, or? Gladys, you're not wrong for being scared, but we, we, we see any uh, any big fights against men here. We see any, you know, big crimes. No, what does he do? He beats women, his sister. Those are the priors this guy has. And I understand uh, that, but I lived it. <laughs> but I felt it, and I still feel it, and I still remember it. But Gladys, <laughs> look at me, look at me. Just look at me. Once Delilah has his name, it's gonna be just like those hands around your throat when he choked you out. What I want you to understand, Gladys, is once you take that step and do what he wants, that's when you're gonna have a real reason to be afraid. It's hard not to get angry, you know, I know what she's going through and, uh, and stuff, but uh, even knowing about the phenomena, the syndrome, whatever you want to call it, it's hard not getting angry that she just can't get angry at this fucking guy. Daniel, come on in here. Hey, Dan. Hey. Daniel, the box. It's not the box. No, that's the dummy box, right? This is the box they showed me. Yeah, what are you doing with that? <laughs> Bring me back. How you doing, buddy? Oh, all right. You? Yeah. Hanging in. Well, what's the order? What what's the order of analysis here? Um, DNA probably has to get on it first, right? Uh, you and know, then you after want, DNA you want does DNA. their thing, then send whatever DNA doesn't need to Scott Hardy to see if he can find some... Extract any information right. from the vomitus. Right. And specifically, they're looking at type of, uh, if there's any type of food, you exactly. know, and again, you're trying to establish the timeline. But would DNA be able to determine whether there's, because she's got internal bleeding at the time. Right. right. We want to know if there's blood in her stomach. But if, well, that's what I can tell you if there's blood in the stomach, because it depends on where the vomitus is coming up from. We still want to know that, because that would be a big clue for Gladys that, hey, something's exactly. really wrong yeah, with this she's kid right here. Blood. You know, I think where Daniel's going is you could still have the contents of the stomach coming up in the vomit and not have the presence of blood. It, although there's still internal bleeding that's not in the stomach sure. contents. Oh, right. absolutely. Right. So I'm saying that. But it, what Pam's point is, if she's throwing up yes. blood, that's yes. another sure is. signal yeah. to mom that, right. hey, you should be doing something here. Right. Yeah, but we were also concerned, was she, we wanted to establish whether or not, while in the infinity, prior to her death, whether she was a sick girl or not. Well, well let me right. ask you this, Dan. Would you, would you vacuum something up that could have been? Vomitus that wasn't apparent to you at the time, or would you know it? Absolutely. You would, I would not have known it, and it would have been vacuumed up. I think we just want to look for vomitus. So we've got to go to the vehicle, strip it of the hard items, and then do a trace. Just pull the carpet off. Pull the carpet off. Yeah, right. I mean, it's going to be you a know. big job, but that just has to be done. So It's going to look great in Pam's office. I got it. I agree. That happened in the first person's yes. yes. Fine. It's a double meter. 
What are your suggestions? We need to make start make finding out what the hell's gonna happen to this baby with CPS. My suggestions are that um, obviously social services is gonna have to get involved, and her mother's willing to take the child. And uh, my suggestion is that uh, that that's what happens. I mean, right? But how do we we gotta try to work to make this seamless so that there's no disruption? You know what I mean? I don't think it's gonna be that complicated. I hope you're right, but you know, I just always prepare, try to think about the worst. So, I mean, I uh, hope you're right. I mean, yeah. And I think you're right, but you know, I just my don't want to snap. My only concern her. is Cologne's perspective because he has an interest. I mean, obviously, he can't do anything, but he may have somebody at his end who wants to, and well, then they would have to battle that out. That would certainly be a wrench in the process, um, yeah. Um, our first goal is we want to make the, tra you know, we'd like Lilia there and like Lilia seamlessly to be able to take care of the child as soon as, okay. as you know, medically possible. Tim's afraid of calling and offending everybody at CPS, so we want you to do it. <laughs> well, I think Curtis is more afraid of that. I, I, mean, I don't have any problem. All right, I'm that. afraid of Tim calling and offending everybody at CPS. <laughs> no. By the time he's done, they're going to come take his kid. <laughs> Lilia? Uh, I don't know if this is accurate or not, but we think she's at the hospital and she may have given birth or she may be given birth. What is your name again? Tim O'Brien. I have a gentleman here by the name of Tim O'Brien. With Clark County Public Defender's Office. Clark County uh, Public Defender's Office. Regarding Gladys Perez. Now, I'll call you in the morning. Uh, hopefully, maybe they call you tonight and say the baby came and you can come see her. I don't know. What are you going to do now, Lily? I'm going to my cousin's house to, to pray to to pray for that everything comes good. Hi, Gladys. Hi. How you feeling? I hear you're taking baby steps. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I'm already off of the anesthesia, so now I can feel everything. <laughs> oh, are you in a lot of pain? Yeah. I, I just had the doctor come in. It went back pretty quick. And I was just surprised that they didn't even, I wasn't even there for, I was there for 12 hours after yeah. Delilah's birth. Um, tell me what, what happened when they gave you the, uh, the, the application for the birth certificate. When they said what last name the baby was going to have, I told them they were, she was going to have my last name. She's like, are you married? I said, yes. And they're like, okay, then we have to give you your, we have to give the baby the married, your married name. I said, no, because that's not her dad. Okay. So they said it has to go under your last name and here's a form to fill out if you want to change that. Right. Okay. So Delilah's name right now is Delilah Sumiko Perez. That's it. What's the middle name? Delilah Sumiko. Asun? Uh-huh. Blue. It's because I get blue eyes, right? Huh? Nothing. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Gave birth at 8.30 last night. She was back in jail at 10.30. So she called you when she got back. You were able to go in with Pastor Paige. Is that true? Yes, uh, because and the person was there, and I saw him. And then say, if you see my daughter, I'm not going to be available to see her. And he says, oh. And he said, wait for me here. And, and they let me say hi, just say hi and, and ask her how she, she She looks great. I mean, it's unbelievable. She gave birth, what, 15 hours ago, whatever it is. <laughs> She 
they don't supposed to cross the street like that with two little kids. It's wonderful, you know, because now maybe they're going to give me the little girl and everything is okay. <laughs> Gladys has for you. I know uh, uh, she asked me to give you this. This is a, uh, a crucifix that uh, another prisoner made for her. And uh, if I, I believe this chain was crystals. So she wanted to make sure you had that. And uh, I don't know if the ring has any significance. Yes, I gave her when she was like 13 years old. You gave this to Gladys when she was 13? Look how small it is. Thank you. Did Lila wake up yet? No? <laughs> oh, maybe, no. Is this Marta? Yes. Hi, Marta, Tim O'Brien. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Look at me, Lila. Oh, she does have your nose. I know. Yeah, she has my nose. Long nose. <laughs> and ugly. <laughs> it's pretty. All right. Good luck. Thank you. This car is the Infinity, and this is the Intrepid that they drove up to Oregon. See?
That's from 2004. And it's a questionnaire for domestic violence from this, from Los Angeles County. Oh. You know what I mean? It's kind of interesting that. So that's a Saul. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know what I mean? It's not filled out, but it's in the car. So if her claim is she's been battered over the years, that's something we probably need to have. I was thinking, kind of interesting, the first thing they do when they come into town is go there, and here we are at the end, and right back over here. License plate. Clothing with stains, cell phone, keys, small white fat farm shoe, roll clear tape, miscellaneous paper. And there's a bag with uh, some crystal substance in it. Really? But to me, it looks like a sugar donut. Tough, but that sounds good right now. <laughs> you know, as cops, we love donuts. Yeah. <laughs> you used to put uh, something this big, oh, this small hole. But I mean, you need to say that. But push. Look at that. A professional job if I ever saw one. Gladys, did you know she was on 2C? Yeah, you knew. I knew they moved her out of med, yeah. Yeah, because she tried to kill herself. And she stopped eating. For five days, I think. After the birth? Yeah. They started her on some antidepressants, though. Well, that's good. Now that the pregnancy's yeah. done, they oh, can try to... Yeah, I know. When I asked her, I was really glad to hear that. Lily had just spoken with me today. She said Cologne called her up. Oh, yeah? That's what she said. What did he say? He said uh, he wanted to talk about just being able to talk to the baby, have his mother see the baby, and him and Gladys are going to get married. And uh, He said he and Gladys were going to get married? That's what he said. Um, oh. You know, I, I just told her, I said, ignore him. Don't, if he calls again, don't talk to him. So you got a lawyer? Do you talk to your lawyer? Okay. Is 2C medical or is that the isolation, the suicide watch? Is that where you're going? She's in 2C. Thanks. some more or what? Yeah, and then I didn't eat for like five days. It's the harassment downstairs. Now I don't have the baby, so they have something we need to talk about. Inmates, you mean? Or? Mm. Oh, the inmate or staff? Inmates. The vents, the yelling across the tier. They put me on some antidepressants, but I don't know. I just sleep all day, that's all I do. Um, are, you, are you getting married? Oh, I heard about that. My mom gave it to me yesterday. I can't even, I haven't even been able to get divorced. <laughs> what, you think it would just do something to protect him? I don't know. It's not... But I'm not trying to defend myself with this case. Not that I'm trying to protect him. So as I said at the beginning, I don't want the death penalty for Mark. You guys, they can punish him, whatever, but not like that. Well, that's, you know, that's going to be up to a jury. You know, in my opinion, the worst case scenario would be, well, then they just find you're both guilty of first degree murder. And how about you and I? Where are you gonna? Uh, what's our relationship like? Are we gonna be working together, or what? Am I gonna be fighting you the whole way? I don't know. Tim. My mom asked me to be honest with you, and that's what I'm doing. Yeah. 
That's all I can ask for. I don't know at this point. I don't know like, right now. The way I am, the way I'm feeling, the way I'm thinking. Uh, I just hate to see you shoot yourself in the foot. You know, realistically, that I want to do whatever I have to do to get home. The only thing you got to do, Gladys, is tell the truth. You know how hard it is to live with what happened. If you're not thinking about it, you're dreaming about it. It's always in there. All right, All right Gladys. Okay, Tim. I'll talk to you next week, okay? All right, bye. One just verdict, guilty, against Miss Perez. If you're making goo-goo eyes at him or even giving him looks of encouragement, they're gonna fucking hate you. You need to dig deep, and you need to figure out why you're here. I don't like morning verdicts, Curtis. The War, une série fleuve sur la seconde.